6.6, area and volume of a sphere. Okay, so in this uh, lesson, what we're gonna be doing is, well, what it sounds like, we're gonna be finding the area and the volume of, well, a ball, right? That's what a sphere is. And, well, technically, what a sphere is, is if you had a point at the center of that, um, and then had a radius drawn out from here to here, a line segment, then, that would be the same distance everywhere around, right? That would be the same radius there, the same radius there, and, you know, towards us, right? Because this is in three dimensions, and, and really just everywhere, right? So this is the three-dimensional version of a circle. Another way of thinking about that, too. Okay, so the formula for the surface area of a sphere is going to be 4 times pi r squared. All right, and the volume of a sphere is going to be 4 thirds pi r squared cubed okay and uh it might also be written like this right where it's four times pi r cu uh, cubed and then divided by three they really mean the same thing right again these are on your formula sheet so we don't need to memorize them so let's jump into some so it says the diameter of a softball is approximately four inches determine the surface area of a softball to the nearest square inch all right so this is our softball they've told us that the diameter, right? So from one side to the other is going to be four inches. Okay, so let's write down our equation now. So it's surface area is equal to four pi r squared. And we see as soon as we write it down that I need r, not d. But that's okay. Figuring out radius when you have diameter is really simple, right? That's just going to be half of that, right? So our radius in this case, so from there to there, it's going to be two. All right, so this is just going to be the surface area is equal to 4 times pi times 2 squared. So the surface area is equal to, and then here, we'll, we'll plug it in. So that's going to be 4 pi times, and then I hope everyone's okay with me just calling 2 squared. I'm just going to call that 4. You could go 2 squared, doesn't matter. Okay, so that's going to be 50.3. So 50.3, but it did say to the nearest square inch, right? So that would just be rounding that up then. So the surface area is gonna be equal to 50 inches uh, squared, sorry. Okay, what is the surface area of a soccer ball? Oh, sorry, let me read that again. The surface area of a soccer ball is approximately 250 square inches. What is the diameter of a soccer ball to the nearest tenth of an inch? Okay, so let's draw a sphere. All right, so there's my sphere, and it's saying what's the diameter? Well, here, let's write down the equation again. Surface area is equal to 4 pi r squared. Okay, so I can solve. The, they've given me um, the area, right? So that's my surface area. Uh, and I can just solve for my radius now, right? And then... It wants diameter, but that's not so bad, right? Because if I figure out my radius, then the diameter is just going to be twice that. So I'll just multiply my answer by 2. So let's fill this in. So the surface area they told us, so that's going to be 250. So 250 is equal to 4 times pi times r squared. And then we're just going to divide by 4 pi to begin with. So 4 pi, to get rid of those, so divide by 4 pi. And I'm just going to write this again as 250 over 4 pi is equal to r squared. And then very last step, we got to get rid of the squared, right? So we need to square root both sides. So those cancel. So we get r is equal to the square root of 250 over 4 pi. Okay, let's plug that one in. So we've got, I'll do it all in one move here. So we're going to go the square root of 250 divided by and notice I'm still underneath everything's underneath the square root here now so 250 divided by and then again right I can't just go divided by 4 times pi because my calculator will do the wrong order of operations there right so if I want to divide by 4 pi I need to put the 4 pi in brackets in the bottom right so it's going to be divided by 4 pi and then close the bracket okay so now it knows the four pi is in the bottom. And then we should be good. So that would be 4.46.
four point four six. And that says in the nearest tenth of an inch, so that would be four point five um, inches is equal to R. All right. The moon approximates a sphere with a diameter of 2,160 miles. What is the approximate volume of the moon? Okay, so again, we're drawing a sphere. And it's telling us the diameter of the moon is, so from here to here, right, is my diameter. Let's write D for now. Okay, and D was equal to 60 miles. Okay. And we just want the, the volume. So then let's write down our formula. So volume V is equal to, well, let's go back to our formula sheet here. So formula sheet for the volume of a sphere, 4 thirds pi r cubed. So that's gonna be 4 thirds times pi times r cubed. Okay, well, we don't have r, do we? We just, they've given us d, but that's not so bad. We can just go, um, our diameter, so so r is going to be equal to 2,160 divided by 2. So that is going to be 1,080. Okay, and then all that's left is just to plug it in. So v, come on, v is equal to 4 thirds times pi times 1080 to the power of three. Now this is gonna get a big, isn't it? Because if you go to the power of three, and I already have a pretty big number to begin with, this is like 1080 times 1080 times 1080. This is gonna be a big number, right? And then times all that. So let's put it in just the way it looks though, just to find our answer here. So this is gonna be four thirds pi r cubed. Now you don't need to put the four thirds in brackets, but it's probably a good habit, like four divided by three like that. Your calculator would have been fine going four divided by three and, and just leaving the brackets out. But like I said, it's a good, it's a good habit. So go four thirds um, and then times pi and then times um, 10, 80. And then don't forget to cube it, right? So you don't have a cube button, but we do have to the power of, so just to the power of three, okay? Enter. So that's going to be that big number. I've already forgot it. Six. And there you go. <laughs> yeah, big number, right? And what would the units of that be? Well, that would be miles cubed because it's the volume of it. And now one thing with this too, this, this number that we came up with was actually far too accurate, right? So if you guys are in science uh, or physics of any kind, you, you'd see that we actually, we have four significant digits. So our answer here should actually only have four significant digits as well. So we can do that by doing scientific notation, or if we want to just communicate that we're not that accurate, the other thing we could do here is just say that the answer is this and then round the six up to a seven, and then the rest get zeros. Miles cubed. Or, like I said, you could also write that as 5.277 times 10 to the power of, times 10 to the power of negative nine, right? It'd be the same thing. Miles cubed. Okay, so all of those are, are correct. This first one though, that's too accurate, right? We're we're not that accurate when we when we say the diameter is that like that much. So yeah, we have to be clear about our sig digs there. Especially if you're doing physics. All right. All right, number four. It says a hemis hemisphere has a radius of five centimeters. What is the surface area and volume of the hemisphere to the nearest tenth? All right, so what is a hemisphere? So a hemisphere, let's see if I can draw this. So if we make kind of a long oval, and then just like a, it's, a, it's really a dome. Okay, so a hemisphere 
Yeah, I think you get the idea anyway. Here, let's do a little bit different. All right, I think I did better there. Okay, so this is our hemisphere, and the hemisphere is really just a half a sphere. It's a, yeah, hemisphere. So it tells us that the radius is five centimeters. The radius would be from here. Okay, so that would be five centimeters from there to there. And now it says, what's the surface area and the volume of this hemisphere? So you know what? It might be a little easier just to think about volume first. I find volume easier in a lot of ways, right? Because the thing about this, volume is the amount of stuff inside this thing, right? So for the volume, all we got to do is, is figure out the volume of a sphere with five centimeter radius and then just cut it in half, right? Just divide it by two. So let's do that one first. Okay, so we'll say volume is going to be equal to four thirds pi r cubed. Okay, so the volume is equal to, and you know what? We, we can plug it all in, that'd be fine. We could figure out the area of like a full sphere and then divide it by two, but we could also just divide it by two before we even get going. Why don't we just play around with this equation for a second here? If we went, why don't, why don't we do it this way and go one half, right? One half, like multiply it by, by a half times four thirds um, pi r cubed. Well, do you see now that we've got a four on the top and a two on the bottom? Well, we could really just simplify that, right? Wouldn't that simplify just to two, right? Like that four over two would just be two over one, right? So this would all be the same thing as saying V is equal to two thirds pi r cubed. And there you go, we just derived our own equation for a hemisphere instead of a sphere. Okay, so let's plug this in and we should be good. So the volume is equal to two thirds times pi times five to the power of three. Okay, so we'll go two divided by three, two thirds times pi times five to the power of three. Okay, so 261.8. And then that would, would have been in units of, so we're doing centimeters. So this would be centimeters cubed because we're doing volume. All right. So hopefully that made sense with this thing. Like I said, the other thing you could have done, you could have just done like put the number in there, right? That could have been five to go in, in for, for R to begin with, with four thirds. And then whatever you get for an answer, then you just divide that by two. You would end up getting the same answer, right? If you didn't like this method I did there. All right. Next one. So let's do surface area now. So surface area, um, well, if you think about this, the, the surface area like for a whole sphere would have been right down to the bottom, right? And that would have been all the outside. So that would have been, let's write down our equation. So surface area is equal to four pi r squared, okay? But to tell you the truth, we don't need the bottom part there, do we? So we just get to take that off. Again, we get to just divide it by two, right? So let's do that. Let's actually just take this and go divide it by two. And then we, we've made ourselves in our own little formula again, haven't we? Four over two, that would really just be two pi r squared, okay? And what's that gonna get us? That's gonna get us all the area of, of this, right? On, on this side and the back side there, right? What it doesn't do though, is it doesn't give us the surface area of the bottom of this thing. Right? When we cut this in half, it's like we expose the, the underbelly of this thing. So now we expose the circle. There's a new circle that wasn't there before. And that is a surface. So we need to account for that surface on the bottom. Well, what kind of shape was it? It was a circle, right? Well, we know how to find that. So it's going to be 2 pi r squared. That's going to get us the lateral area. And then we just need to add another circle. So 2, or sorry, just pi r squared. So pi r squared. So we just added another circle. All right, so we can just throw it in. That'd be fine. Again, I'm going to show you guys a little shortcut here, though. So this would be, you know, 2 pi r squared. You know, you put in 5, and you can put in 5, and that'd be fine. You can just put the answers in that way if you want that one. But let's play around with this a little bit. Look at this. We've got pi r squared, and we've got pi r squared. So we've got two of them here and we've got one of them here. 
Okay. Well, if you think about it, this is the same thing as just collecting like terms. How many pi r squareds do we have? Well, we have three pi r squareds. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Maybe that's a math teacher's perspective, but I think that's cool that we just get to make our own little equation of this now is three pi r squared. That is the new general equation for a hemisphere for, for the surface area. So let's plug it in. So the surface area is equal to three times pi times five squared. So the surface area is equal to, so we'll type that in. So we get three um, pi and then times five squared. Oh, I didn't need to do it that way, but five squared. So 235.6, 235.6 centimeters and then squared. 